opportunity to witness the sun disappear behind the moon today during the total solar eclipse that moves across Mexico and 15 U.S. states. Uh, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland has just a few hours left to hand over materials related to the president's uh, classified document drama or face a possible contempt of vote in the House. Uh, President Biden will land in Madison, Wisconsin today to pitch yet another attempt to wipe out billions of dollars in student loan debt. And House Republicans will have articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to the Senate on Wednesday. This is an executive branch agency head who is really defying the law, defying the two other branches of government. Florida Republican Congresswoman Laurel Lee speaking of Fox News. America's listening to Fox News. WSME. Live and local. Real talk starts now. Uh, uh, right now is right now. Is that right? Hello. Good morning. That's Can correct. you hear me now? Can you see me now? <laughs> I don't know about the seeing part. <laughs> if you're looking at Facebook or YouTube, you'll see that the eclipse is already here. Y'all thought it was going to happen today, right? You're not right. Uh, I know that. Would you uh, do away with the eclipse now? Hey. I, I, <laughs> there it is. Back over there. Okay, the eclipse was here. Now <laughs> it's gone. Full light again. Good morning. I'm Rayford Brown. I'm Kelly Knapp. And I'm Lee Barrows. Uh, I've already been accused of not being right. No. That means I'm wrong? I never said you weren't right. You were very quiet when I came this morning. I think you were in mourning. <laughs> well, yeah, I there's my that black too. shirt for you. Yeah, there's there's that too. I'm the uh, North Carolina Wolfpack, State Wolfpack, they, they, they don't. Mm-hmm. They got within spitting distance of the biggie. Yeah. From North Carolina. Okay. Uh, that would be nobody. Well, not only that, even throughout the nation, only four teams got as far as state. That's right. Three other teams. So, That's right. Yeah. So, they did great. Got no problems, no beefs mm-hmm. about it. No, no I'm Just proud too bad of it didn't I'm proud. cross over a little bit more. So, anyway, uh, the final four is almost finally over. <laughs> One and done after tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I won't be paying a whole lot of attention to that, I'm sure. Uh, meanwhile, because we're going to be busy. All sorts of people are gathering across these United States today, waiting for it to turn dark in the middle of the day. Our nearest celestial neighbor is, of course, our moon. A lot of folks still don't understand how this thing happens. They've got it all backwards sometimes. It's much smaller than the sun. But periodically, it crosses between Earth and the sun, and because it's much closer to Earth, it appears a quarter million miles, about a quarter million miles as compared to the sun, that's about 93 million miles away. Got those figures? Quarter million miles for the moon, 93 million miles for the sun. It appears much larger as a result of that, about the size of the sun, in fact. Along some of the trek today, the sun will virtually be invisible. In other areas, there will be a partial eclipse. That's what's going to happen around here. A word of warning, first thing, I don't care how great or dark your sunglasses are, take a look-see during the eclipse and you will lose at least some part of your eyesight. It's called retinurns. All sorts of gimmicks have been used from building pinholes, camera-type boxes to project the image of the eclipse onto a piece of paper to almost anything you can think of. Pinhole boxes are apparently fine as long as you don't look at the sun. Some think those dark sunglasses are okay. Nope. Let me explain to you why. Sunglasses, you put them on and your iris actually gets bigger. Allows in more light. Uh Uh-huh. Not a good plan. More damaging rays coming your way. There are some glasses that are made to allow you to view this eclipse. I've seen them being sold in all sorts of stores. Pretty sure I won't be a test dummy for those devices, to be honest with you. It makes me wonder where they were manufactured. Give that some thought. If you find some on sale somewhere, China. pick them up, up, take a look at made in where, and let me know where it is. Cause I've got some money on the table here about where I think it's going to be made. The eclipse is thought to be a religious event among any number of religions. An eclipse that I remember in the 1970s was a different experience for me. I'll tell you that not because it was twilight in the middle of a bright day, but because of the sounds that I heard. It got very quiet, and then dogs suddenly started barking in what was a very quiet time. Quiet at least where I was. I wonder what it was like on a busy street. Do motorists pull over? 
the area lights, some call them street lights, where I was, came on in the middle of the day. Added a little to the mystique. It was a bit like being on the water in a fog bank so thick that you could not see more than 100 feet, maybe even less, in front of the boat. I remember one of those on the intercoastal waterway near Steeds Ferry back in the 1960s. Very quiet it was, but I heard dogs barking in the eerie distance. It'll be an interesting experience to see what happens today. Have you, uh, do you recall any close to total eclipses? I do. Yours was in the 70s. Yes. I mean, I don't remember the 70s. I mean, I was a kid, <laughs> yeah. so I don't. I, I don't didn't know. know perhaps where you were in other places yeah. that the, the eclipse showed up. Yeah, I was in North Carolina, so. What do you expect uh, might be happening today? Do you, um, you have any concerns? No. You don't. I know some of the areas where you can see the full total eclipse, they've sold out of hotel rooms. Oh, yes. People have traveled across the United States to be in line to watch this. It's been a big deal yeah. for a lot of people. In reports from the past, people said horses and other beasts of burden refused to move during the eclipse. Birds, some said, fell from the sky, seized with fear. They yeah. just fell out of the Ooh. sky. I'm standing. Oh, you said that, and I turned around. Somebody was at the door, and I just. For many people in ancient times, a total solar eclipse generated fear. They thought the world was coming to an end, or a great evil would follow. Some myths often involved a beast trying to destroy the sun, with the fate of Earth hanging in the balance, or a sun god god becoming angry, sad, or sick. Others think it's a good luck omen. Okay, I guess I'm just going to go buy a lottery ticket today, <laughs> just in case. Oh. Now, don't all y'all do it. That'll just lessen my chances of winning. That's okay, so y'all stay home. Don't buy any lottery tickets today. I'm going to go get one. Haven't bought one hmm. in a long time. I this might either. be my day. Now you got me all nervous. I have to go buy one. Okay, here's one of the issues that has uh, happened in the past. Increased traffic and spectacle of the total solar eclipse could imperil motorists. Researchers warning that fuel collisions increased during previous eclipses and law enforcement bracing for the event now. Really? People not paying attention. There was a 31% increase in fatal traffic accidents during the 2017 total eclipse and even in the days before and after the event. That's according to a letter published in the, internal, uh, the uh, JAMA Internal Medicine Journal this week. The surge in accidents was not linked to the moments of darkness, as one would have thought, right? Dark all of a sudden. It doesn't get dark all of a sudden. It got dark slowly. Mm -hmm. And then they figured out, well, people were just going to be driving, and it's going to be suddenly nighttime, and they're going to crash. Nope, that's not the case. Actually, during the eclipse itself, there was a significant decrease in that hour that involved the eclipse. The increase in wrecks happened during the hours leading up to the eclipse as people were rushing to their chosen best spots to see the event. Rushing, as well as the rush of people leaving those observation posts to rush home as soon as it was over. During the 2017 eclipse, about 20 million people in the United States traveled to other cities within the 70-mile path of totality. Not me. No. I ain't got no reason to go there. Wonder what it would like being on an airplane at that time. Freaky. Now that would be the experience well, to have. That, yeah. Find out the path, be. find a, a, a flight that's going to be going through that area at that time, and just go. Take a little ride. What if that messes up their electronics that's or not, anything? What, what if it messes no. up the pilot's vision? They're not looking so much. <laughs> They're got to go all the electronic stuff that works even when it's dark. What outside. is there wearing yeah. eclipse Remember? glasses? You're driving a plane. <laughs> but also read that you're, you're not supposed <clears throat> to leave your pets outside either, if you can well, help it. Well, I don't That's know true. why you shouldn't they because up. they just go kind of crazy, I guess. Yeah. And looking up the sun and say, what's going on up there? Then suddenly you got a, a doggy with a, a, a white tip cane or something. Mm-hmm. No, it, it can cause retinal burns, even split seconds, uh, according to the researchers. I mean, that's a lot of intense stuff coming down. And you you got to understand, during the eclipse itself, your eyes are going to be dilated even more, right? I'm watching it on TV. I'll watch the replay just in case the TV <laughs> screws up too. Oh, God. So. Hmm. How was your weekend, y'all? Mine was busy, good, enjoyable. Well, good. Kelly's back. 
Kelly's back. She Kelly doesn't rested. Look that, she doesn't look that much refreshed. I hurt my knee. How did you do that? You don't want to know. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Now you've opened the door. What'd you do? You're really, you're really going to get a good laugh out of this. Oh, I'm sure. That, Let me catch. You're already smiling. Fire alarm went off at the whole time. No, town this happened when I got back. The day I got back. Oh, my <laughs> God. You fell down the flight of stairs. I did not fall down. You fell up the flight of stairs. I didn't fall. This is even. I wish I had fallen. Decided I needed to. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't work out much while I was at the hotel. Oh, that's, um, that's never hurt you. Put on my dance cardio video on my Peloton bike. Yeah. <laughs> Within oh. one minute, I had pulled my torn meniscus. <laughs> so. It's been a rough. Going up down the stairs of home has been rough this weekend. There's a cane over there. Well, you mom, I've got that. I just. What did you it use your mom's chair? I did. I had, to use, I had to use it Friday night. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, so my knee's been swollen all weekend. I She's got one of those slide chairs and he, going down yeah. the stairs. Yeah, mom's got one of those stair lift things. Oh, they, does she? Uh huh. Oh, that's cool. Things pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I did. I didn't fall, which oh, is that's... unusual for me. Hmm. No, I'm good though. This hurting, but I'm okay. Well, I can't get you to come help me unload all that stuff that I got out of the trailer, Kevin. You no. tried that last week. I tried. You so still I to, haven't found any. I know. I did it myself yesterday. Yeah, well, I'm proud of you. Very good. No, you're not. I don't it think hurts. you're supposed to be doing that by yourself. <laughs> what? All that stuff in there. Well, that's good cardio for sure. Yeah, I know, but I think that's it might be too much workout. for him. Why? This might be. You call me a wimp? <gasps> no, I'm not calling you a wimp. Uh -huh. I'm calling you older. Oh, no, 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 no. See, somebody <laughs> tells me that I'm going to do it twice as hard. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I just going to try to take advantage of it. Y'all need to come help me. Yes, now you've opened the door, Kelly. Thanks. <laughs> it's too polony out there. No, it's not. It's that's all gone. Polony. No, it's guys. still in my car. No, well, that's because you came from up yonder, down yonder. The Pollen's state of about Pollen. Gone. It's about gone. I'll be glad when it's completely gone. Well, I think they said by the end of this month, it should be done and over. That's a well, good thing. We don't have any pieces out here. I have a, a very, very light film. Mine's dirt and pollen. But I don't have any on mine. I do on mine. They mowed down my favorite uh, car wash. So. They mowed it down? Yeah, what mowed it down. It's gone. Somebody got out of control with a lawnmower? <laughs> Where'd that happen? Uh, right there on Gum Branch. Right there next to Pizza Hut. Oh yeah, they took. I liked it. Why because they take that down? Uh, yeah, why did they? They're take building that down? a small business complex there. Hey. Shops, really? Yes. <laughs> With no car wash. No car wash. I I like that one because for you a have couple a garden dollars. Hose? Yeah, I do, but in a bucket and some dawn. I'll be out there probably and today. a sponge. <laughs> Stop. That's all it takes. The weirdest thing yesterday. My granddaughter's Jeep, the battery was dead. Well, the battery really wasn't dead. She's got a short somewhere. So I went out to jump her. And I put my battery charger on there and used that. And it would start to click over. Not nice on enough. But I thought, you know what? Let me, it, where's your cord set? So we got the battery cords, you know, the jumper, jumper cables, cables out. And I hooked them up and her Jeep would not even click. Now, but yet, when I put the battery charger back on there, it worked. And now, why wouldn't uh, um, that's weird cables work? Because you either had very small cables or a very bad connection. You know, they were they that's were weird. good cables, brand new. Well, um, it doesn't matter. You can buy them at the dollar right. stores, and they're very small cables, like a number. Um, Maybe that's what it was. Ten or twelve cable like, or something. Does my truck have a six? special something on it where I have to click? I, this does not make sense. So no. I put the battery did charger you have back your, on it. Did you have your truck running? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've I've jumped many of a vehicle okay. in my lifetime, put, but it was the, weird. You can put the jumper cables on it, leave them on there, okay, right. for a period of time, and leave your car running, your 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 truck I did running, that. and give it some gas to get it up, so it will I be actually that. putting more juice in there for about I five did minutes. That. Yeah. And would her her Jeep would not even? I mean, it would not even. You had do a bad a connection then. It must have been bad cables. Bad cable or, or bad in. connection, you got to wiggle that thing. Oh, no, I had it on there good. Believe did, me. Did it, did it spark when you connect oh, yeah. to one of the terminals? Yeah. Okay. But but when I put the battery charger back on there and I let it sit about 15 minutes, went out, cranked right up. So, I don't know. Okay. I had to get my book out. I thought, is there something special no, now that they no. put on trucks or something? Yep, you should have been okay. Weird. 
Yeah. It is she got it going. She's it's good. operator error. Probably so. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, just a real quick good morning to Dylan. Um, he has um commented on her Facebook. Thank and you. don't forget Come on, Dylan. Yep. May eleventh. Well, got drive. about a month to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. A month Postal from service this, food drive. Four weeks from this coming We're going to keep reminding everybody mm -hmm. we need yeah. to restock the soup kitchen and yeah, all those we'll, other places. We will talk about that too. Yes. It's it's getting time to do all that, restock your, get rid of your old hurricane stuff. Uh, yes. Let's move forward with some, with some new ones and take the take the old ones that are still within date and uh, get ready to put them on your porch. I on started the 11th taking of May. cans get out of my cupboard yesterday. Yeah, don't give your expired stuff. No, 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 don't do that. Dylan, you just bring the truck over here and back it up to Rayford's front door. He's no. got a huge pantry. Yeah, but we keep replacing that stuff. <laughs> no, he's got a huge pantry. We don't have new. We don't have old stuff in there. <laughs> I know it's nice. I love this pantry. It's easy to recycle when you can see it all. For those yeah, of you who have a traditional pantry, where you put a bunch of stuff in the back, you buy new stuff, you put right. it in the front. You buy more new stuff, you put it in the front. That the old stuff in the back, you haven't recycled it. You need to do That's just right. like they do on, on store do shelves. Do like you do milk. Do like they do on store shelves when the guys come in to put the new stuff up. They always pull the old stuff off first, put the new stuff in the back. And then but do the, you do that when you go to buy milk? Like you reach, you move everything in front and reach in the back. I will look thing. to find out the, the, lo the latest yes. one. Yeah. yeah, I want the longest date right. available. I always do that. I reach yeah. back and get the you know one with the longest date. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the longest date is, is the one I want. Okay. John yeah. Stars Electric sponsors this severe weather tip each day. The good news is that the National Weather Service in Newport does not, does not see any chance for severe weather in eastern North Carolina through at least Saturday. Yay. This can give you the time to take a serious look at your supplies for the most common severe weather facing us each year. And with the Colorado State University forecast last week predicting 2024 is the most active hurricane mm. season since the mid-1990s, some things we'll be discussing before the season officially starts are ways to harden your property. Trimming dead tree limbs and removing trees that are dying. You don't want loose objects from those trees becoming projectiles. Check with recommended tree services to do the evaluations. It would be a good idea at the same time to have a roofing inspector check your shingles. They can get loose over the years and become very susceptible to wind damage. In other words, if it's loose, not glued down anymore, uh, not nailed down perhaps pr uh, properly, wind can get under them, blow them up, blow the shingles off, and then you have potential for leaks right there. That can be a problem. While the guy's on the roof checking, have him check for hidden damage in the way of soft spots, especially around sunroofs and chimneys. Nobody thinks about that, do they? Mm -hmm. Next time, we'll give you tips on making a checklist to have ready in the event a storm is possibly going to impact this region. Another thing you may want to consider now is a standby Generac generator. They're made in sizes to take care of your most basic needs should a power outage impact the area for a day or more to the larger, totally automatic units that will handle virtually all of your power needs for any number of days after the storm. Given the history that many of us experienced with the last major hurricane here, the extended coverage has become important. Hot water, air conditioning, refrigeration, including your freezers, lights, and any special medical needs that require electricity become extremely important. Your Jacksonville Generac dealer is John Starr's Electric. Well, with trained and certified technicians, you can feel comfortable knowing that the best professionals are on your side. Not only does the team work with you from the first call that you make to make sure they know exactly what you need, they're on call 24 hours a day to make sure your Generac is always ready in case of a loss of power. Power up your life with the Generac generator from John Stars Electric. Call 910-989-1908 today. This is the perfect time of year to take advantage of the professionals. It's all turnkey and worry-free. And the mm, they service exactly what they sell. Again, the number to get you started, 910-989-1908. You're live in local Real Talk, and we'll be right back. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Liberty Mutual presents How to Be the Life of the Party. 
Okay, first turn the music off. Then ask for everyone's attention. Now, tell them that you customized your home insurance with Liberty Mutual and saved hundreds. Boom! Now everyone knows you're not just a pretty face. You have some brains inside that face that know how to save hundreds on home insurance. Woo! Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Based on recent survey of new customers who switched and saved. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates. Exclusive Massachusetts. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Feeling trapped with that old phone? Don't. Getting a new phone is easy. Come into Verizon and get one of our best phones on us with select trade-in on Unlimited Ultimate Plan. And get a plan that helps you save by only paying for what you need. Act now and get a brand new phone at your Verizon store today. $999.99 device payment or full retail purchase with your smartphone line on Unlimited Ultimate Plan required. Less up to $1,000 trade-in slash promo credit applied for 36 months. Promo credit ends if eligibility requirements are no longer met. 0% APR. Trading conditions apply. A plan every adult family member should consider is the pre-arranged funeral. It's the worry-saving thing to do for your family. Making pre-arrangements helps to alleviate the additional stress on family members that can come with arranging a loved one's funeral. Jones Funeral Home's prepaid funeral plan helps remove confusion. They make a practical evaluation of costs possible, and it's the best way to take an unpleasant task off the shoulders of the family. Call Jones Funeral Home at 455 -1 with locations in Jacksonville, Richland, Swansboro, and Holly Ridge. Hey, race fans! New River All-America Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville's action attraction, presents the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250, featuring the Z-Max Cars Tour this Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. with the biggest names in short track racing. Get ready for some fun and excitement as the racing season gets underway. Reserve your spot now. General admission tickets, $25. Seniors, military, kids 6 to 12, $12.00 cash at the gate. Kids five and under free. Advanced tickets available online at newriverspeedway.com. It's the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 this Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. And the only place you're going to see it is at New River All-America Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville. It's, it's live and local. Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Hey, the Marine hey. Forecast brought to you by Community Prevention Services right here in Jacksonville. We've talked about depression a lot on the show. Maybe you're not aware, but depression and anxiety cases have increased significantly since 2017. Since then, with the pandemic and other issues, adult and youth numbers continue climbing at a steady rate. Do you or someone you know have issues with either depression or anxiety? If so, reach out. Don't wait. There's no reason to suffer. The staff at Community Prevention Services can help and are eager to do so. They provide quality and confidential counseling for individuals from 7 to 100. Call them today, 910-353-0972. Community Prevention Services, they're located at 918 Henderson Drive. The number again Make a note of it, 910-353-0972. Okay, offshore today, a great start to the week. Get ready to fish on easterly winds around five knots, becoming southerly in the afternoon, seas around two feet. Dominant period, seven seconds. What better day can I have? Sounds and rivers flat, increasing to a light chop this afternoon. Tomorrow, southwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet, sounds and rivers a moderate chop. Wednesday, okay, but conditions will begin to get less conducive for offshore fishing and boating as the day wears on. Southerly winds in the morning 10 to 15 knots, increasing to 15 to 20. Uh, later on, seas 2 to 4 feet, building to 4 to 6, sounds and rivers a moderate chop. Today, sunny, high of 71. Tonight, clear, low of 54. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a high of 77. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy, a low of 61. And on Wednesday, mostly cloudy, a high of 76. I like it. Yeah, it, it's it, look, yesterday the sky was so blue, it was blue, blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's uh, almost like, wow, this is a pretty day. Beautiful. And it wasn't so hot. I was able to get out and unload that trailer with all the mulch and all the bags of cow manure on it. Got them all taken oh. care of, everything done. The garden is looking really good. Three tomato plants are already up and running. I've got some more out here. Plants Sad. of sea, uh, tomatoes and uh, squash, zucchini, uh, uh, plants, squash, peppers, uh, oh, varieties. I that was squash plants in yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's a combination in there. Nice. Yeah, 
You got them coming on strong, <clears throat> coming on strong. Yeah. A lot more people are wearing masks these days as fears of another serious COVID outbreak are making the rounds. Maybe it's working because I haven't heard much about COVID of late, or maybe it's just the, it's wearing down. Down in Charleston, y'all ready for this one? A teenager has been busted because he was actually wearing a mask. Well, was he in a bank? Nope. <laughs> what was he doing? A little one that is seldom enforced makes it illegal in South Carolina for anyone over 16 to wear a mask that conceals their identity in public. It's an old law dating back to the KKK where excuses for men wore masks and robes to keep from being recognized when they terrorized black residents. There are similar laws in any number of states. In North Carolina, the law was used on any number of occasions when police stumbled on an individual coming from behind a convenience store in the middle of the night wearing a mask with what police believe was an intent to rob the store. Intent, intent, intent is the key in North Carolina's law versus South Carolina law. It was easier to make a case if the masked man wore the mask in the summertime and conversely, more difficult if he was if it was snowing and he was wearing a ski mask in the wintertime. 18-year-old Jabari Coleman of North Charleston was arrested on February 7th, wintertime, for resisting arrest, public disorderly conduct, and most notably, wearing a mask. you got to be kidding. Coleman was walking past an apartment complex with his younger siblings after playing basketball when he noticed North Charleston police officers breaking up a large fight. Coleman yelled profanities at the police and refused orders, but the teenager said officers targeted him because he was wearing a mask. Coleman said the mask is used to cover multiple scars on his face from a random shooting last August that left him with lifelong injuries. The teen had plans to join the Marines, but with a felony conviction possibility, if that happens, those plans will likely be down the toilet. I'm pretty sure that with the publicity, this case will dissolve itself. Hopefully, the state's legislature will make sure that law is removed from the books. I also hope that teens like this young man would learn a lesson. He had absolutely no reason to involve himself in the police actions. He wasn't part of it. He wasn't there. He showed up and when police were dealing with the fight. I agree with that. He had no dog in that fight. And he just walked up to see what was going on. Instead of walking away, he started throwing profanities at the police until he was arrested for failing to disperse a legal charge. They told him to leave the scene, which they have a right to do. The cops then chose to dust off a law that should not have been a law to pile on the charges and shame on all sides now. I agree with that. That's just stupid. Yeah. What kind of mask was he wearing? Uh, like a ski mask or just a like a COVID mask, mask? Mostly a ski mask type thing, but okay. it was more of a kind of a hoodie. They showed a picture of one okay. similar because they don't have that one anymore. That's in evidence. Oh, that's just, yeah. Wait till they go to trial. Our kid just not, hasn't been to trial yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, the DA there would be very smart to be dismissing that, that charge. DA, I wouldn't even get, get rid, of that, try. rid of that yeah, mask charge. How embarrassing. Right. If you want to charge him with failing to disperse, it's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and do so. Yeah. I'm Let sure him plead. be reduced down. Yeah, it, I crazy. hope so. Yeah, otherwise, they're, you're going to be the laughing stock of the world How like you haven't been before. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a lot, still got a lot of squatter issues going on. Yeah, and we do. I saw a news story over the weekend in, in up in the Seattle, Washington area where this guy has found this loophole and the residents are. <laughs> ticked off um he squatted he hasn't paid rent in like months and he got a seattle area housing like they provide money to people who are in danger of losing their you know getting yeah. rent kicked out of their places but was he there legally in the first place no he paid one month's rent and then just oh well he was there legally in the first place with no sign lease but something like that and uh -huh. the owner but anyway this guy's gotten um taxpayer funds yeah, <laughs> to take hit to pay his rent that the um, and these are he's done four. It's the second time he's done it. He lived in a million dollar house. These are expensive homes. These aren't like little small. But are they paying what the expensive home would warrant? To They're be paying, paying his all his back rent. Uh -huh. And the so the local city councilman is so upset. He said this is an abuse of um, taxpayer funds. Yes, it is. 
that um, he's looking into that auditing that business now, that nonprofit or whatever. For oh, yeah. That reason. I, just, I just don't give them any more money. That's what I say. And the poor guy that um, owns the house has try been trying to get this guy out um, because apparently he's not there legally. This whole squatter thing has become a squatter thing. Yes. But, I mean, this is crazy. Well, North Carolina will be taking it up. I think Oslo County is going to take it up locally. Uh, I, I, so. I believe they are. Maybe isn't that what we heard last week? I, I know. I think Senator Lazar well, said there be a was state talk thing, about state yeah, deal. Yes. They were working on that. Yeah, let's get a state law in here. And, right. <sighs> there's no such thing as squatter. Royce, yeah, That's Royce illegal. was on the radio last week, and he talked about. He said we've really not had any issues in Onslow County. Well, with they it. had not had any issues in uh, yes. any other part of the country mm -hmm. until they did. Mm -hmm. But um, right. there is yeah. legislation that is being talked about. But, uh, you know, we didn't have any crack here when they had plenty of it in California. We right. didn't have any fentanyl here when they had plenty of it coming across the southern border, but until we did have it. Right. Stop it now. Stop it I before agree with it gets that. there. Yes. yes, I agree. You get a law on the books so that you don't have to create one in mm -hmm. the last minute. It's a simple law to write. You can't do this. Mm -hmm. Or do one of my favorite one: Failure to do right. Yeah. I got some sad news for anybody going to Moorhead City. Uh-oh. I don't know what you're going to say. Ells is closing down for what? three to six months. They're doing renovations. That's yeah. too long. Three yeah. to six months. They're adding some new fryers. Uh, well, that's good. That's the day. Yeah. You can They'll do that over the weekend. The parking lot. Why? Uh, that parking lot is quaint. Improved shed. He's trying to improve. He with said coolers and freezers, larger grill, two more fryers, painted handicap parking spot, additional landscaping, and sidewalks. He wants to reduce customer wait times. I have yes. a friend that I eats had any spot every day. I haven't had problems with wait time. I might get I've over never, there and place never. the order. But you know, a new one in Smyrna just opened up. But theirs is the type that you have to actually call ahead or go to the window. They don't come out mm -hmm. to the parking lot. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, this um, it's good. It's Three to six months. I hope the three months is more. Right, three that, months. That shrimp burger. That shrimp That's burger. That's what he's known for. I know. Yeah, yeah. it's like the. Great I have a friend burger. that goes there about every day. You know, yeah. I, I, I've been. I, first time I stopped there was in the early mid sixties. I guess mm -hmm. we were when yeah, we go to leave from, when years. we would leave yeah. from here to go to more through Moorhead to and stopped in Moorhead for breakfast about five o'clock in the morning, and then drive on over to Harker's Island. Boat her out to the uh, Cape Cape Lookout and do our hunt flounders, mm -hmm. fill up the coolers full of flounders, and come on back and we got to stop at Els. Oh yeah, got to have a shrimp it's burger. Like a thing. Shrimp burger yeah. was oh, it. Yeah. I mean, that was it. Shrimp Tartar sauce. Are the best. Tartar sauce was all I needed. That was good. Good stuff. And a lot of shrimp on that burger too. Yeah. They always fell off on the side for me. I could not keep them all in the bone. Yeah, bottom. yeah, but they're nice and warm. But that's and, all right. Oh, Just pick them up and eat them. I want one right now. Can they hold off closing till I can get down there? No, he wants to get this work done so he can get back in business. Well, yeah, before the big peak season gets here. Yeah. Out. Well, he's gonna miss the whole summer season just about. It's gonna be three to six months. We had um, we had a. Uh, time when I went over to to see Robbie one day I had to I didn't go over to see her I went over there to get some, uh, some credentials right. over to the place I had to go to yeah. and then I uh, stopped by a boat dealer over there and I, I saw a boat he convinced me that I needed that boat it took a lot because I kept telling him uh-uh mm -hmm. so about noon I called Robbie and she said you still here and I said yeah you want to go get some lunch she said yeah I said I got delayed so I picked her up and we stopped at L's. We got, a, we got some shrimp burgers and head on back down to that boat dealer. And I parked right behind what is now the pirate attack. My boat. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. Parked right there. And she there said, that's go. the boat I've been looking at. One just like it down in Florida. Good this is be. what I've told you about. You need to have this boat. This is the boat we, you need to buy. And you got it. I said, that's kind of an expensive proposition. Yeah. yeah, I know, but it's worth it. Heck, um, yeah. You, you can get it. You can get it. Well. I'd already oh. made the offer to the guy. It was on consignment. Uh -huh. Oh, you already had? Okay. Yeah. Well, I made him an offer, mm -hmm. and the guys, it, it was one-third of what the boat that Robbie had seen. Same year, same boat, everything down in Florida. But no I had a way. trader, too. I paid one-third of the, for that boat that day. See, it was meant to be. In cash. Meant to be. He me out. He said, you brought this much money up here. Aren't you afraid somebody's going to take it from you? Like, no, please. He obviously <laughs> doesn't know who now. you are. Yeah. Now I'm on an Ells hot dog. 
Well, you're not going to be able to get one. You can dream about it for a while. I wonder if they make shrimp dogs. Put some shrimp on a hot dog bun. Mm, well, you could put it on a hot dog bun yeah. without the hot dog. Oh, yeah. Cut the that. hot dog in half, put the hot dog on the bottom and the shrimp on the top. <laughs> it's a shrimp dog. Mm, I don't think so. We have a guest in here who thinks you're about... I don't care. Yeah. 1073. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 1073. Kenneth Bloom, good morning. How are you? Good yourself. Going, hanging in here. Beautiful day. Yep, it we, is. We have per, a couple of really pretty days here ahead mm -hmm. of us. It may be a little windy later on in the week, but uh, it's, there's no severe weather predicted. That's the good thing through yeah. at least Saturday. Saturday yeah, it's going to rain Thursday, but other than that, we're fine. That's not severe. No, I don't think That's so. That's going to help my garden rain. save my yeah. water bill. Yeah, only on Thursday. I'm looking at it now. 60% and it, maybe it'll drop. Well, 70 right here, but yeah, 60 Thursday night. But then beautiful. The rest of the weekend. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. We're, yeah. we're getting into that time of year. I know. Ken here, uh, you retired now, haven't you? Affirmative. Okay. Retired <laughs> from the Onslow Sheriff's Office? Yes. After a bunch of years? Yes. A bunch of years in the Marine Corps? 22. Wow. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for tw both. At least twice. Yeah. Yes. So, thank you twice. Uh, Ken, you're uh, but, but you've got an, an, another little passion, too, you, you're dealing with these days. Cars and car shows and stuff like that? The passion has always been there. Oh, it's uh, uh, I took the passion and applied it to the community, and that's kind of where we're at now. Um, the passion's been there from my youth, okay. uh, from the family, uh, from racing. I raced in NASCAR before I went uh, in you the Marines in NASCAR, yes, in really, the, yes, with Ray Hendrick and all those people. Uh, Richie Hendrick Evans. Motors, really, yes. yes. Cool. Good for you. That's my team. You're uh, what was your first car? Everybody knows that. My first car was a 67 Volkswagen. Beetle? Beetle. Wow. That was a, uh, uh, a high school car. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first one that I purchased outside of family was uh, a 67 RSSS Camaro. Oh, okay. I had a 68. And still have that. Oh, I had a 68 Chevelle, brand new off the lot. Paid $2,400 for it, no trade in back in the day. It was a V8, too. Even had radio and white wall tires on it. It's a shame you don't have it now. I know that, by God. That was a, it was a nice car. But I had to have something bigger and better. You know how that goes. Um, my first car was a 58. Yeah, 58. Delray Chevrolet, six cylinder. It was like a tank. Yeah, the inline six. It took from Pumpkin Center to Gum Branch Road to get it up to 55 miles an hour, foot on the floor. <laughs> it was not. And it, it was just momentum. It was just momentum. You couldn't stop it, but it was it was there. It was a big old heavy car, yep. but a nice car. We called it the Flintstone car in the beginning. The back floorboards, when I bought it for $150, by the way, no back floorboards. They were gone. They rusted out. So a sheet metal guy here in town that we knew took it there. He put a new floor in for me. Yeah, it's the uh, now it's almost there's almost nothing you can't change. Yeah. Whereas uh, uh, there's a lot of manufactured items now uh, right. Kits that and... are manufactured. No, they're manufactured in the shop that oh. are not manufactured anymore, not available out there. Oh, really? There's a kind of a line that they draw on just how deep they be because there's so many cars. If mm -hmm. you look at how many cars there are in the last hundred years, different models, yeah. you just can't stock all that. You can't put it on the shelf. So that's where those metal technicians come into play Yeah. Okay. and vocational schools, which is part of my foundation of my car shows is vocational schools. And it's a partnership with the Universal Technical Institute. Oh, really? And uh, that's been since we started, uh, they have come to a lot of the shows uh, to uh, recruit, mm -hmm. and we've had as many as six recruits from one show. Wow! So those are people that have careers now in the automotive industry that otherwise uh, would have to search online and find uh, access because Universal Technical Institute is not stationed on the East Coast at all. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've always been pushing to try to get a campus here. On oh, that Coast. would be nice. Uh, what a great addition to Onslow County. Well, it's the technicians themselves now, automotive technicians, 
they uh, Universal Technical Institute gives that technical training now uh, where the, uh, the dealership can send those individuals uh, to Universal Technical Institute for specific tra training on specific things. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what happens is there's a huge, right now there's a huge cost to the dealerships for uh, per diem, hotels, sure. et cetera. So that's, that's, that's become a big problem. If they put a campus on the East Coast, let's just, as the, what we were aiming for was one here mm -hmm. in sure. Jacksonville. It puts uh, the Navy fleet in Norfolk, Virginia. It puts Camp Lejeune. It puts uh, Goldsboro and for the, for the Air Force and uh, the Coast Guard in Elizabeth City, yep. all those military people that are transitioning within 300 miles. Within 300 miles. Easy. The cost of transportation is dramatically improved instead of sending somebody to Arizona. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, you know, in high school, we, we had auto mechanics. We yeah. had electronics and we had shop being taught. We also had home ec, which, you know, that was part of the curriculum. If you wanted it, it was all... It, so many of us took it. Yeah, I made things on metal lathes, yeah. you know, in machine shop. I, I regret that I did not spend more time and take the auto mechanics. I did not. I At that time, it was I, fairly easy to change your spark plugs and change your oil. Pretty much any dummy could do it. Yeah, right? what I did is I went to the coastal, the not the coastal, but the community college in Virginia, Northern Virginia, and took automotive while I was in high school. No. Oh. Oh, that works out too. In the evening. Let's, let's take a quick break. I want to talk about this car show you got coming up because it's for a great cause, or go, a bunch of cause, in fact. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME, and we'll be right back. WSME. Chico's Tires, 2320 Wilmington Highway is Jacksonville's oldest tire company. And now Jacksonville's newest tire company is Little Chico's, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard. Little Chico's carries all the major brands and all sizes, such as Michelin, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, and many others, and all new tires have warranty. In addition to a great selection of new tires, Little Chico's has used tires starting at only $30. In addition to new and used tires, Little Chico's does brake service, minor auto and truck repair, expert custom window tinting, and towing. So if you need tires, new or used, brake service, minor auto or truck repair, expert window tinting, or if you need a tow, visit Jacksonville's newest tire store, Little Chico's, 1675 North Marine Boulevard. By phone, 910-333-0473. For Little Chico's Tire Service, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville. When you need comforting, who do you call? An old friend. Knight Jacksonville Heating Contractor services the heating and cooling needs of our area with dependable quality train systems, guaranteeing indoor comfort for your home or business. In addition to quality train systems, Jacksonville Heating Contractors offers 24-hour emergency service, Nate certified technicians, and over 50 years of experience and service you can trust. And with a Jacksonville Heating Contractor service agreement, you never pay retail for heating or cooling services and receive priority scheduling. Remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in New Bern, you can call Trent Heating and Air Conditioning, 252-633-2200. In Moorhead City, Sea Air Heating and Cooling, 252-247-1122. If you need service or repairs, just call an old friend. Jacksonville Heating Contractors, an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. For deals on train systems and more, visit anoldfriend.com or call 916. 0347-2843. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper and print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full color ads and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. 
Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Cigno Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Cigno Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Cigno Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. It's live and local. Real Talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. All right, we're back. We're back in the studio with us is Kenneth Plume, Ken Plume, um, retired from Oslo Sheriff's Office, retired from USMC, um, but he's not retired. He's still working. He's still got things going. Uh, He's dealing with uh, uh, the beauty and the beast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You don't have to explain that one because a lot of people say, what? Well, the beauty is something that you uh, admire every day when you walk outside to drive it somewhere place, or you might drive it over there on Sundays. That's a beautiful, you know, uh, that's your image of the car, your mm-hmm. personal car. And the beast is when you do modifications to it, things you... Oh, really? It may be performance, but it may be things you put on there that you wanted to make it your own. Special. Special. Custom. So it doesn't necessarily mean speed and that type of thing when it comes to the beast. Um, but... Uh, if you think about the, the cars that you've known, they've gone the places you've gone. They've gone the place your family has gone places where that car has gone. So sure. that's the kind of the link to the heritage of any given family. If they have a car that stays, especially one that's passed on, mm-hmm. it could be what your grandfather drove when he went everywhere. Wow. So that's kind of a uh, something that I identify with. One car or two cars I wish my daddy had saved. Three cars I wish my daddy had saved. He uh, he purchased in, later in life a 1936 Dodge, had uh, one of the original tires on it, and only had 36,000 miles on it. Mm. And that thing, the, you couldn't hear it run. You started it up, you had to listen closely to make sure you could. The motor was turning over. And then there was the um, a 1957 Chevrolet he bought in, in October 1956. Down at Marine Chevrolet, when they took the paper off the windows, that's the way they used to do it. You're not that old, but they used to put all the paper on the windows, so the butcher paper, so you could not see it. They did it so they moved all the cars inside with uh, tarps on them. Well, prior all, to that, they had a, a they had a unveiling unveiling day, and it was done on TV as well. Okay. And he went down there. I think it was on or about the 15th of October, because that's normally when they did it. Uh, and uh, he bought it right on the lot. Brought right then and there, bought a 57 Chevrolet. Beautiful car. Wish I had it now. Yeah, back then, uh, the Dodges and the GM cars were the ones who promoted <clears throat> individual changes every year. Yes. Changes in styles. Ford was very resistant to that. It took them a very long time for them to finally come around to doing that uh, because they started losing a lot in sales because people wanted something that was different. unique. Yep. And, and that's, they wanted something that we, that we used to go down the highway and say, oh, that's a 56 Chevy. That's a 55 Chevy. That's a 59 Chevy. We could identify them from looking at them even as kids. I think that you could probably identify park lights behind you and headlights uh, yes. when <laughs> the law was behind you. <laughs> that's right. You could do that too. So anyway, it's got a while. All right, let's take another break here. Then we're going to talk about this car show and what's going to happen. It's coming up quickly, like this weekend. So hang in. Yes, it is. You get there. Hang in there. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, AM, WSME. Freedom 97.1. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Rich Lands Piggly Wiggly, where good things cost less. Down home, down the street. Highway 24, Rich Lands. Fresh ground shuck, 10 pounds or more, $2.99 a pound. Certified Angus beef family pack, T-bone steaks, $11.99 a pound. Boneless chuck roast, $5.79 a pound. St. Louis style pork ribs, $2.49 a pound. Prairie fresh Boston whole butt, just $1.49 a pound. Spring Mountain Farm fresh whole chicken, $1.59 a pound. Red sealess grapes, $0.99 cents a pound. And russet potatoes, great for baking, 
just $2.99 per bag. Enjoy down-home country cooking in the deli seven days a week in the store. Dine in or take out featuring hot, fresh chicken that will make you smile. Country breakfast starts at 5.30 a.m. daily in your rich lands, Piggly Wiggly Deli. And it's home to the famous Merle Bowl. You can also take advantage of the fast, friendly pharmacy located inside Richland's Piggly Wiggly. Richland's Piggly Wiggly, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Highway 24, Richland's. Remember, say big with the pig. <laughs> Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love of to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan Offices of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accept all major insurances, including military. Lane and Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville. Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. In a season of falling temperatures and rising energy bills, your local Bryant professional is always ready. Standing by to protect your home's comfort and defend you from uncomfortable temperatures and the higher energy bills associated with them. Ready to do whatever it takes for your home, your family, and you to be comfortable without breaking the bank. Because when the temperature falls, that's when your local Bryant professional turns up the heat efficiently. Call Dale E.T. in air conditioning at 346-4311 and let them keep you comfortable this winter. Dale E.T. in air conditioning serving our community for over 25 years. Also, Down East can help you with your home guttering needs. Call Down East today at 346-4311. Bryant, whatever it takes. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing specializes in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. In fact, they paint most anything except cars, including homes, businesses, apartment complexes, decks, and they do minor repairs, wood repairs, pressure washing, waterproofing, and more, including storm repair and cleanup. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing, fully licensed, insured, and locally owned and operated by Roger Carroll Jr. References available and customer satisfaction is always guaranteed. So if you want to paint and maintain power wash or need a new roof call southern touch painting maintenance and power washing at 910-939-0749 or visit southern touch painting nc.com southern touch painting maintenance power washing and roofing salutes our troops and is proud to be part of the continued growth of onslow and surrounding counties freedom 97.1 wsme it's live and local real talk on freedom 97.1 wsme Okay, we're back, and our uh, guest uh, still here is uh, Ken Plume. He's uh, uh, a car. Can I call you a fanatic without it offending you? I guess. Aficionado. <laughs> aficionado is He's good, a but a fanatic is not a bad thing. I'm a fanatic about a number of things, but anyway, not in a bad way. This coming up this weekend. It's on Saturday? It's on Saturday. Okay. And tell me what's involved in it. Well, we've adjusted the schedule to a three o'clock to nine o'clock. Okay. Uh, something that's, um, if you look in the middle of the flyer there, uh, Christina Billings started with me uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, she does stunts on both a street motorcycle and a Harley Davidson. Okay. Very unusual. The average guy out there doesn't come close to even thinking about getting on a different weight uh, motorcycle and trying to do the same things he would do on the other one, but she does it uh, all the time. Okay, cool. And she left and went uh, to put her bikes inside of her truck, drove to Sturgis, uh, performed at Sturgis, and after it was over, uh, Harley Davidson offered her a position with corporate Harley Davidson really? doing stunts, and they sent her to Indonesia, <clears throat> to Nova Scotia, <laughs> around the world wow. to promote Harley Davidson products, and uh, she still comes to every one of my shows. Excellent. Excellent. She's been around here for a while then, yes. right? She's from uh, from Massachusetts and uh, and lives here in Jacksonville and owns Paparazzi uh, uh, 
it's on the bottom down there for, for she comes to the house and does your dog yeah. at your house. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's my sister used to use her a lot, come to the house and and uh wash and clip just take care of your dog, wash them and, and clip their hair and do their nails, everything. That's so, awesome. interesting. Dog grooming, mobile service. And every dog gets a personal picture to the mm -hmm. when it's done. Really? You know, with a little yeah. The, yeah. The decor things on them right. and etc. Yes. And the dog pretty cool. thinks they're special. Yes. <laughs> Well, of course they are. Now, this uh, this event kicks off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's going to be located where? It's going to be at uh, Yop Road Walmart. Okay. And uh, it's at 3 o'clock this time because uh, Christina does a part of her show that uh, has a uh, a lot of bright things to it. Okay, that got it. are kind of nullified by the you sunlight need, in the daytime. Darkness. And right. it will show... For the first time, people, just how uh, unique that is. Just mm -hmm. how unique that is. Uh, um, she can, in the middle of a, doing a wheelie on a motorcycle, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, take her foot off the bottom of the bike and be on just one foot. Oh, really? And then scratch it on the ground with a steel plate on her shoe and the light a fire. Fly. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. Okay, what kind of vehicles are you going to have there? Uh, I bring vehicles. <laughs> To inspire people for what's out there in the models they have, and mm -hmm. they may want to, and that's a sponsorship with Marine Chevrolet and with uh, with Harry over at uh, the Dodge okay. National Dodge, uh, and they've been there every time. I I usually take four or five cars from each one mm -hmm. and pick them all up and bring them all back. Uh, I was a service manager for Richland Chevrolet. In the middle of everything <laughs> was the service manager for Richlands, which was a Carl Ragsdale dealership as well. I remember he, yeah, he had both of them. Yeah. Uh, Carl was still at Marine Chevrolet at the old location when I had KJ Carpenter. Damn, down you know? there on uh, Marine Boulevard. Yes. At Cheney Creek. Yes. Remember it well. Uh, so uh, the uh, reason for three o'clock is because I have promoted a show for whole vet program that's at the uh, Broadhurst uh, um, facility on Broadhurst. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because they asked me to help them get into this market over here, the whole vet program is a program that covers all veteran issues instead of just PTSD and some of the traditional ones. Sure. Uh, and uh, so their show is in the morning until two o'clock. And then mine starts at three o'clock oh. to allow them all to come down the street to mine and continue on at the second one. That's smart. Um, and that's me moving mine to accommodate them, even though I've been there for 11 years. Yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, yes. one will benefit the other. No yes. doubt about it. Yeah. And so that's that's why I've done that, uh, being a veteran myself. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Good for you. Thank you. This is the 11th annual one. 11th annual 21st show twice a year. That's April and October. Okay, well, and I've done two good times of the year too. At the the, the shop, I do have done uh, uh, cruise ins. Cruise ins are not car shows. Car shows have trophies. Cruise ins, mm -hmm. people come and just with, for fellowship issues. And mm -hmm. I've done about twenty five of those. I think altogether, I've done forty five shows. Wow, of the two different types. Uh, but this one, uh, we're gonna let a little puppy in here because yeah. he just he's just so he's, he's just coming. Wow. He's never been this loud. What's he's, happening? He's, he's, he's just, been at Wheaties? Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, he's known as Shockwave. He's yeah. really, really aggressive and affirmative. And, and he's going to meet and greet anybody and everybody. And just He's got to. That's just the way he is. He's our mascot. And we call him Shockwave. Yeah, he was mad. He was. I've never heard him that That's loud. What's bark. happening? What have you been eating, buddy? And if, he's, uh, and if you know about the Shockwave, uh, he was born after Mossberg produced a thing called the Shockwave. Yeah, I have a little experience with Mossberg. Yeah, yeah. I bet you do. But okay, so this uh, this is this Saturday begins at three o'clock for you at the Walmart on Yop Road. Affirmative. And how many vehicles total are you going to have there? I know you've got a dozen or it, so, but no, it 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 ranges from uh, fifty to one hundred fifty. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've yeah. had as many, uh, close to 200 when I did it at the Speedway mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic when Walmart didn't. Uh, yeah. endorse any uh, outside activities. Okay, now, if this, um, who, who can anybody just come up and bring their car up while you're doing anybody this? Anybody can bring their car up of any type. If they register, 
they can they can register. They, there's a list of classes. Mm -hmm. uh, uniquely, I have 40 different classes to choose from. Wow. Which means that I have to put trophies potentially for 40 classes. Wow. My trophies last year were over $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but that's where the sponsors come in. Okay. Is there an entry fee for the people who bring their cars in? Twenty bucks. Okay. Twenty. It's been that way from for all twenty-one shows, all eleven years. You got a category for boat? <laughs> you know somebody that took a boat and and took a uh, um, sixty-one Impala. Made it look like a car. Yes. Yeah, the I've back. seen I've seen those. That's cool. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty unique. Okay. But that's as close as it's going to get. Oh shoot! Oh, go ahead. In the proceeds. From this event, St. Jude's, St. Jude's, St. Jude's, yes. Um, uh, that's been been there the whole time. Uh, uh, Christine is very uh, loyal to that as well. Christine will bring her; she's bringing her dog groom trucks there, and she's oh, going cool. to do free nail clipping. Oh, really? At, oh. The, at the show. How about for me? Can you do mine? It's up to you, between you and Christine. Okay, I'll talk to her. Yeah, maybe a free masseuse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, well, that that's great. I, I, you know, I, I've got to get by there since I don't have that many duties on Saturdays these days. I yeah. can do that Saturday afternoon. And so. there's a live band. The Adam Hill band is now played. Uh, this will be the 26th time for me. Wow. We have Holy mackerel. Food trucks? Uh, what we do is uh, um, uh, Smithfields will set up their store at the show. Okay. Nice. That's even better. And I've got a coupon. Oh, not that one. I've come to the conclusion that um, if you put four or five food trucks, you diminish the ability for each one of them to make profits right. by a certain degree each time you do that. And um, if it's promoted as a food truck event, well, then they're all going to get something because uh, people are coming there specifically to eat. Right. But if I want it to be an option for anybody that's there and they don't have to... Uh, Two at the max is yeah. Generally, the the best thing to do. And one is better, especially one like Smithfield that can do it all. Yes. So that's that's the good thing. And because there. they're they're down the street, they just come and bring, bring their employees come over, set up a thing, and they actually operate just like they would down the street. Yeah, just run back and forth. Right. So not when they need, they, like, by the way, they're not overstocking and sure. end up losing money by putting stock there that they don't sell. Yep. That sounds like a winner. Yes. Ken, thank you. Sounds you, like you a appreciate what good you. Time not only have done in on a couple of different facets, but what you continue to do. This is something like this is, I mean, it's wholesome. How much is the entry fee for us to go watch this stuff, take a look at it? It is free to the public, always. That's the word that we were looking for. It's essentially free. It's always been free and it's never gonna change. You got a unique card that you know that's gonna be there. Uh, I mean, something that's really a headliner, something unusual, so obviously unusual. Sure, but I'm not gonna tell you because that's the reason you wanna go. <laughs> oh, you just got me hooked. Smart Good move. Man. I like Good it. move. Ken, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate your time. Thanks. All right. Let's take a break. Do a little Fox News. You're live on local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. WSME, Camp Lejeune, W210, CJ, Jacksonville. News. I'm Gianna Gelosi. Today is the day a rare total solar eclipse going to darken the skies across more than a dozen states in a show that won't be seen again in the U.S. for another 20 years. The path of totality is going to begin in Texas around 1.30 p.m. local time. Exit over the U.S. across uh, Maine about an hour later. We booked tickets months ago for the eclipse and we're going to go watch it in Whitney. That woman in Whitney, Texas. So how's the forecast looking? We're watching the path of totality. Most of the country are just going to see a few clouds, including Little Rock, Arkansas, from Dallas all the way up uh, towards New England. A really good looking forecast. Fox senior meteorologist Janice Dean, President Biden will head to Wisconsin today, where he's expected to announce new plans to cancel student debt. And former President Donald Trump plans to lay out his abortion policy today. America's listening to Fox News. Freedom 97.1. WSME. It's live and local. Real talk.
All right, we're back live in local real talk uh, here on Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., WDSME. Uh, Ken's an interesting guy. I met him a couple times. uh, uh, He was working traffic and stuff like that during the Shrimp Festival. I I remember it it took me a while, but sometimes, Mm -hmm. sooner or later, it all comes back around. Mm -hmm. And our little buddy, Shockwave, has just made his rounds and... uh, He's getting his backside rubbed. Never heard him yeah. out loud, ever. Uh, well, he was like pretty, pretty assertive this morning. He was getting it. He's the other day, The other day, we didn't let him in in time, and he it was raining, but he was not going to leave. No. So he dried himself off on Lee's pants. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. That's what you get. Ta- it's like, that's what you get. That's right. Ta- ta- he was ta- mad. Ta- he got up there with paw, muddy paws all I'm like, mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, That's what funny. I get for not letting him in. That's right. Center. He fixed you up. Okay. I've stayed out of the politics for the past week or so oh, since yeah. you were gone. Oh, so you wait till I got back? Yep. All right. Let's yeah, hear it. Let's stir up some stink. I didn't see it coming. Obama's financial advisor. That's uh, so when Obama occupied 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, mm-hmm. is, uh, dis- is dissing the current occupant for claiming that the U.S. economy is better than ever. David Axelrod, we've heard that name. I know that name, yeah. Times, right? Yeah. Staunch Democrat criticized President Biden's economic strategies, revealing it drove him crazy when the president tried to extol the miracle of his economy as Americans struggle to afford groceries and more. During a podcast appearance, Axelrod said the president's strategy was not going to work, noting Biden's Easter interview with Al Roker, where the president touted the strongest economy was the wrong strategy. Who else has said that? Me Mm. and a lot of other people out there, too. (sighs) Axelrod said Biden should put himself on the side of working people. Apparently, Sleepy Joe has forgotten that he came from the working class. He actually came from a working class of family. Here's one that really catches me by surprise. Like a growing number of Democrats, Axelrod, whether it's even a good idea, if Biden continues to run for re-election. Oh, my. Oh, my. Mm. Problem is that the DNC has already made that bed, the one infested with bed bugs, but there's not much of an option left. If they roll the dice, allowed Biden to bow out, Kamala to sign up, and start pay- praying that somehow Trump will be convicted quickly for crimes that would prevent him from becoming president, that whole strategy might work. However, otherwise, I'm going to advise you, save your money and wait until 2028, knowing that Trump can't run again. That's my advice to the Democrat National Committee. Regardless of whether Trump makes it or is able to make it, I think if, if he can stay in the race, if he, if he stays in the race, unless something really strange happens, I don't see much of a reason that Trump won't be elected. Am I asking for that to happen? No. Get off your high horse, y'all. No, I'm not wishing that Donald Trump is going to be elected. And for certain, I'm hoping that Joe Biden will not be elected. So if neither one of them should be elected, who else is out there? Well, Kamala Harris. No, absolutely no way, Jose. That should happen. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he's coming up in the polls. Well, you know, this, can he beat Trump? No, I don't think he can beat Trump. Can he tear down Biden? I think he, Kennedy yes. can beat Biden. Well, he can beat Biden, but he's running as a third party. Mm-hmm. Whose votes is he going to take away? I would Biden's say votes? probably Biden's. Maybe some of Trump's. But some of Trump's, yeah. yes, but Biden for sure. But you know that no labels party has dropped out of the race, yes. so to speak. Not bother. They couldn't find. They anybody. couldn't find a candidate. I'll, I'll volunteer. Y'all pay me enough money, I'll run. Yeah. Well, I'll change my name. I'll nobody, officially change my name to. Nobody's going to go up against Trump. Uh, that's what the they don't want to be yeah. beat up. They don't mm-hmm. want to be talked about. They don't want to be drugged yeah. through the fire. Who do you think Trump's going to pick for his running mate? Well, I don't know. He's indicated a female. You know, I tell you, I said this this weekend. If he had any degree of smartness at all, he would pick Nikki Haley and take her voters. She said she's no. She's already said yeah. she's not endorsing him. I agree. I mean, he burned that bridge, but I mean, that would have been a, a definite shoe in for him. That would have been a slam dunk. Yeah. He did, if he, but he, 
I think he belittled and beat her down so much verbally that she's he did assistant. the same thing, yeah. and she did the same thing to him in 2016 when he was running for president first go round. Yeah, and guess what happened after he was elected president? She became, he chose her. Yeah, uh, yeah. As ambassador. Yeah. He's talking Come. right now. So Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. Yeah. Well, you I know, like I, I think she's kind of. I don't like her. She's kind of lost some of her limelight. Mm -hmm. I think. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see that as being the mm -mm. his best option. I, yep. I don't know. Who, who would it be? Is but he going to pick somebody that's a no name? I was but, hoping he'd pick at least pick Tim Scott. You know, that's my dude. But I think he's that off would be the a list good move, now. Yeah. The latest list has got Christy Nome. Yep. Ben Carson. I like Ben Carson. Elise Stefanik and um, Vivek Ramaswamy. I do not, I do like, not like him. Like that guy's him. a weirdo. Yeah. I don't like him. That's that's the latest list. Here, here's one of, Tim Scott was on it. Here's one of the things that the Republican National Committee and Mr. Trump should consider. He's there for four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While he's there, he needs to be campaigning for his vice president. Yeah, but I don't think he will because of his ego. But I hear what you're saying. Unlike what yeah. Obama and did not do. Yeah. And unlike what Trump did not do, he did not support his vice president at no, he all. Did. He dissed his vice president, yeah. threw him under the bus. Yeah. If he had, they had campaigned together and continued to campaign together and really come out swinging against the other team in 2016, 2015, 2016 timeframe, and they come out as a team, then at the end of 2020, or the end of the, of, well, now, 2024, mm -hmm. President uh, Trump would have been going out of office, and he, they could have, you got the right man to step into place there at that yeah. time. If he had allowed that. But it, the ifs that. are behind us. The, you know, that's water under the dam, over the dam, and under the bridge. Yeah. So. Yeah. What does he do now? He's going to have to start fresh. Haley, if she would choose it, if she would accept it, would be the one. Yeah, but if, yeah, that she, would be his smartest. She has move. no what, love what? for Trump. No, None she at doesn't. All. And I, th I don't think Christy Nome is a good choice. For I don't like her either. Would, uh, Especially with all the dirt that's come out on her. She's just got. I just don't think but, she's. But effective. would Haley bite her tongue? for a chance to be president because it's what she, she wants like to do. Like you're saying, she could go got, into In four it. years. Because yes. she can campaign all she wants on her own. On, during that four years. Between, make a name well, for herself. Without being whatever. vice president, she can campaign yeah. all she wants. But she's going to go down over the next four years as the person who dissed Trump. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think. And turned him down. I think he ought to offer it to her. She ought to take it and then use that as to build herself up and to do the things that she wants to do. Make it like look at everybody talking about what Kamala Harris is not doing. Oh well she so, done she done ain't done nothing. No. So then go in as a vice president Crickets. and do all these things and then you look even better. Yep. That's what I say. Pick up where Trump is going to be slack. Correct. Go to the border. Yes. I mean, you got the fire and the brimstone you, to do you something. You do that. Right. Yes, she does. You can yeah. lay hands on that fence and build that fence yourself if you want to. Yeah. Get enough people together. But, I mean, she. there are some things that she could do over the next four years that would benefit Trump, mm -hmm. benefit the RNC, and I think the public. And I think Trump would probably become... Uh, more of a figurehead mm -hmm. than she would be. I don't know whether he could stand himself for that or not, mm. but he's getting at an age. He's probably going to be very tired. He was tired after four years. Mm -hmm. If he just does smooth sailing and does the things that he said he's going to do and stay off of I, I don't think social he media, ability, yeah. I, I, he does. I, I, but if, you know, if he would do that, mm -hmm. I agree with you. If like Donald, said. if, um, Biden would toss Kamala under the bus right now and say, you're not going to be my choice. I'm going to pick Christy. I'm, I mean, uh, Haley. I'll pick Haley. She's a Republican, but I'll pick her to be my VP. Oh, that would really shake up the Democrats. Wouldn't it, do? Oh, my word. 
Yeah, it's, it's... But there are any number of people that, that Biden could pick that could save him. Other than her, absolutely. Oh, any, well, yes. anybody but her would be better. Yeah. But uh, he, there are people out there that he could pick, I'm sure. Yeah. And I'm sure he's got his, you know, tentacles out there looking. But who know. would it be? Who would it be? He's, he's, seems like he's still planning to use her. He, which, is, he said what it. What kind of fantasy world is this guy living in? She's well, awful. He's going to want a female that will help bolster which it's not her. the abortion uh, issue, you know, because he's supposed to come out with a statement on his stance of abortion, like today, I think he's supposed to. So a lot of the political analysts are predicting that he will pick a female VP to help with that side. He's of the already bridge. picked her. He's Kamala picked Harris. Her. He has not said she's. Out. Oh, you're talking about Biden. I'm yes. I was yeah. back on Trump again. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're talking yeah. Yeah, Biden. As far yeah. as Kim. Yeah, well, yeah, it goes to reason. I mean, she was his VP during these four do years. Do nothing. That's what I say. I mean, she was an albatross where, for him. Well, she was where supposed to be in charge of the border, and we see what's happened there. What has she done? Yes, vice presidents are seldom heard from. Their tenure. Right. Not much. They could still be doing stuff. But they need to be doing stuff. Yes. And she's got PR people. She's got public information people. Don't call them PR. It, she's got public affairs, public information people that could bolster her. But have yeah. they done it? No, they don't have anything to work with. I agree with that. What can you say? Oh, look at the kinds of shoes she wore today. No, that won't work either. You don't either. even see her with shoes on because yeah, you never see her. That won't work so either. So how can you can't say that? Oh, that was a great outfit that she had today. No, that was that same old. Once again, no, you don't see her. No, because we're busy looking at Joe Biden's crazy choices. Yeah. Well, she wears some crazy outfits. Well, look, when Michelle Obama, she was not exact, exactly a fashionista either with some of the stuff she wore. Yeah, but she mm. wore didn't you know she at least she was half a, the time looked yeah she's after, tall after, and after two she years wore well but yeah. some of her outfits were like oh. after two or three years uh, she was finally getting it together mm -hmm. right right and she yeah. when she left office she was a yeah she looked a whole lot better than she did at the first inauguration take a look back at that one and see mm -hmm, what I'm talking mm -hmm. about I mean I think. You know, we're going into the spring, early summer. Trump needs to pick his person. Well, he, he does. He his his timing is right. These big convictions coming up. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't want to pick anybody that um, is going to tick off the Republicans during the primaries. That's generally not the way things work. That's going to be interesting the, uh, to incumbents see. incumbents have that problem or mm -hmm. advantage, depends upon how well you're VP looks, but if you're an incumbent, you got a decent acting VP does a, has done a lot of stuff or done nothing that has ticked people off, then you're kind of okay. If you have a VP like Kamala Harris, you're not okay. She's hurting him every day. Well, I don't understand why members of the Democratic Party don't recognize that. Well, they do, but what can they do about it? Well, I, you would think they'd have some kind of input. Not until after the primaries. Yeah, that's true, too. Uh, again, if they yeah. kick her off, there's going to be a certain element going, so well, you did what? Yeah. You dumped her? Why'd you dump her? Just because you want to be reelected and you don't think she can do it for you? Is that what you did it for? I can hear it now. Yeah, good point. Yep, that's the way it goes. Let's take a weather break. You're live at Local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. It's your turn to call 910-333-0139. We'll be right back. 37.1 WSME. Mohawk All Pet Protection and Warranty is the only cover protection and warranty for all pets, all accidents, all the time. Because your pets are family members too. No matter how you live, we've got you covered. Soft, luxurious, smart strand forever clean carpet. Gorgeous, durable, solid tip, luxury, vital tile. Mohawk has the ultimate floor for every room in your home that's suitable for all pets. For details, contact Watkins Floor Covering online at WatkinsNewFloor.com. Watkins Floor Covering, thanking you for voting them the best of the best for 2023 in the flooring covering and carpet cleaning category. Watkins Floor Covering, they're more than just floors. It's custom showers, custom tubs, carpet cleaning, backsplashes, bathrooms, commercial, retail, and home flooring too. Watkins Floor Covering, family owned and operated since 1997. With locations in Jacksonville and Surf City. Watkins Floor Covering, you stand on it, we stand behind it. 
For 40 years now, people throughout Jacksonville and Onslow County have trusted Barnes Diamond Gallery for all their jewelry needs for every special occasion. They understand that every day is a special event for someone, whether celebrating a wedding, anniversary, birthday, engagement, or graduation. Let Barnes Diamond Gallery custom design something for you. Barnes Diamond Gallery does on-site repair in addition to their quality and selection of diamonds. Diamond fashion bands, pendants, watches, earrings, gemstone rings, and necklaces for anyone for any occasion. Major credit cards accepted. Layaway available. Barnes Diamond Gallery offers appraisals and paid top market prices for gold and silver. Barnes Diamond Gallery, 461 Western Boulevard, Suite 120, Jacksonville, open 930 to 530, Monday through Friday. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that, too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos, too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net, where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. Air conditioning, your trusted local carrier indoor weather team. So we know our heating and air conditioning needs since 1967, now offers residential and commercial duct and dryer vent cleaning, and now offers expert residential and commercial plumbing service. In case of a power outage due to a storm or for any reason, be prepared with a Generac generator for your home or business. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning has Generac generators in stock ready to install. Remember, better breathing comes with cleaner air. Let Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning improve the air quality in your home or business with professional air duct cleaning. As always, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning is available 24-7 for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing emergency needs. Turn to the carrier experts. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, with locations in Jacksonville and Hampstead. Visit online, HumphreyHeating.com. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, since 1967. Relax, we're on the way. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Green weather forecast brought to you by Community Prevention Services right here in Jacksonville. That's somebody that Kelly knows pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about depression on this show a lot over the years, in fact. Maybe you're not aware, but depression and anxiety cases have increased significantly over the last five or six years. Since then, with the pandemic and other issues, adult and youth numbers continue climbing at a steady rate. Do you or someone you know, anyone, have issues with either depression or anxiety? If it's sort of out of control or getting worse, reach out. Don't wait. There's no reason to suffer. The staff at Community Prevention Services can help, and they are eager to do so. They provide quality, confidential counseling for individuals from 7 to 100. Call them today. 910-353-0972. Community Prevention Services is located at 918 Henderson Drive right here in Jacksonville. That number again is 910-353-0972. Before we get to weather, Kelly, we've seen an increase. I mean, people around me over the last few years, there's more depression, there's more anxiety. I mean, people are anxious. Mm -hmm. Everybody from things like this eclipse today, some yeah, people get anxious. They do. Some people get anxious, have just moved to this area about like, oh, hurricane season has come around. I've heard this is a bad place to be and everybody's going to die. Mm -hmm. True. You get, do you get some of those? Yes. So you have, you have to help them out. Yes. But y'all are capable of doing that, right? Very capable. One-on-one -on -one basis? Yes. I see the ages are seven to a hundred. Yes. Would you take somebody older? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Just in case I get that far along, yes. I probably will need some more help. That works for me. Yes. Okay. Yes. We would, um, we would have people that would help you. Yes. It's, it's not a, a joking thing. It, yeah. it is, can, it can be very serious mm -hmm. and people who have never uh, suffered or experienced anxiety. I don't know anybody who hasn't, but I'm sure there are some people who haven't had some degree of anxiety. 
can be very debilitating. Mm -hmm. It can lead to agoraphobia, people that are just uh, flat out afraid to leave their house. Wow. Yeah. It can be very, anxiety left untreated can, can cause a lot of issues. It can also cause blood pressure issues, a lot, of, just a whole lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good news yesterday when I uh, spent the day working, loading, mm -hmm. doing heavy stuff, because I didn't have you to help me. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Robbie was, was working in the yard doing her thing. I was doing this other stuff. and But when I checked my blood pressure, it was 108 over 68. That's awesome. That I know that. Good. Yeah, I like it. And that was without the pills that, that, until that point in time, too. That that even better. So that exercise that helps. Good that thing I didn't take the pills. It would have dropped too low. Yeah. So anyway. Yes, All right, offshore today for you weather guys uh, who want to tr uh, try your chances today. It's a great time. A great week to do it, too, for the first two days at least. Easterly winds around five knots this morning. That's nothing. Southerly this afternoon. Seas, two feet. I mean, the ripple riders out there, you're not even going to get a, a good surf going. Yes. Dominant period, seven seconds. You've got the inlet all to your cell wide open. Here we come. Just make sure you know where the channel is. Sounds and rivers are flat, increasing to a light chop this afternoon. Tomorrow, southwesterly winds, 10 to 15 knots. Seas, two to three feet. Sounds and rivers, a moderate chop. Wednesday, okay, but conditions in the morning are great. We'll begin to get a little less conducive for offshore fishing and boating. Southerly winds 10 to 15 knots. They'll increase later in the day, 15 to 20. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Late in the day, building to 4 to 6 feet. Sounds and rivers, a moderate chop. Today, sunny, high of 71. Tonight, mostly clear, low of 54. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a high of 77. Tomorrow night, mostly cloudy, low of 61. And on Wednesday, Mostly cloudy, a high of 76. Okay, today is the uh, day of the 2024 eclipse. Mm -hmm. We'll see part of it here. It won't be a total eclipse in this area. Uh, it's going to get darker, twilight type. Uh, are y'all going to go out and take a look-see, just yeah. to stand outside? No. Nope. You're not, not even going to stand outside? I have clients. No. No. Oh, well, that might be an experience for your clients. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Well, let us know tomorrow how your clients fare. Mm -hmm. So, and, and if you get any new ones as a result of this. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, it, it should be an interesting time. I, I'm anxious to hear, watch my critters. I'll probably go outside with them mm -hmm. uh, to see if they uh, get excited. I know I've heard stories that animals, some animals get just get wacky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like they know. I don't know what they know. I don't know. Do we want to know what they know? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, some dogs and stuff have gotten wacky over the years. Cows have, too. I've seen I've stories about that, that not for eclipses, but for an earthquake that's coming. Yeah. Or for some kind of terrific storms that are coming. Yeah. We need. I agree with that. We can get cheaper meteorologists if we just Heck use yeah. our critters. Yeah. And some of the signs of nature. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's go to Milwaukee. Okay. Last week, uh, <laughs> less than a week ago, a human leg was discovered inside a Milwaukee area park. More human remains were found across the area in a neighborhood on Friday and again on Saturday. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office says that human body parts were found in an area neighborhood on Friday to begin with. On Saturday, police were called out again a few blocks away. More human remains. Relatives of a missing woman told reporters that they found her blanket, which had a picture of her face on it, in a wooded area near the park on, sa on Saturday. That woman, 19-year-old Sade Robinson, was last seen on the 1st, last Monday. The family also said that Robinson's car was found torched in the same neighborhood last Tuesday night. Mm. The weekend incidents are now the third occasion that authorities have been investigating after that human leg was found on Tuesday. Police have taken what they describe as a person of interest into custody in connection with the severed leg. They're very quiet about this one. Was the severed leg hers or somebody else's? We don't know. It's unclear if any of the three instances of body parts being found are connected. They may be different from different bodies. You can bet the DNA labs are working overtime right oh, now. Absolutely. To, yeah. To, to prove or disprove. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're keeping their mouth shut. And they said, I've, we've got to right now. There may be more stuff out there. We just don't know where it is. That's creepy and scary. 
And by the way, we got every possible location in that park under surveillance. But they don't say that. True. For the reason. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. We can say it down here because nobody in Milwaukee is listening to us. Right. That we know of, yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But uh, this, uh, this, this is a bizarre case. Very bizarre. I, yeah. we, I only remember one dismembered case here. Okay. That was in the mid 70s, early to mid 70s. And over there, I used to know all the subdivisions and areas and neighborhoods uh, behind the off of New Bridge and Johnson Boulevard intersection. The housing area back there is that Canterbury? Bayshore? No, there's Bayshore further up. Oh, you, you said New. Oh, I know where you're talking about. Oh, okay. yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know what's can. I don't know what uh -huh. it is. Anyway, um, somebody up in Carter County uh, near Newport found a skull. Hmm. Okay. Police had gone had been investigating a missing person. A family member had called Jacksonville PD back then and said. They could not get in touch with their daughter. Oh, no. Married to a Marine here. Mm -hmm. uh, police had gone to the house a few times, talked to the guy, and they kept calling, wanting to know what was going on. He said, I don't know. She's just gone. She left. That happened on a regular basis around here. But they showed up. Their parents and other friends and relatives knew who they were. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they reported it. This one, nobody knew where she was. A whole bunch of us went up there to Carterry County to go through the area where the skull was found, found a whole bunch of bones, found her remains, and, and stuff, some uh, stuff that was identifiable hers. Turns out the guy finally fessed up. Sure he did. And uh, he even fessed up to the point that he had used a saw, I believe it was, or a meat cleaver, I <sighs> can't remember, maybe an ax, to hmm. cut her body in two because it would not fit oh. in a in, in the big fill, uh, sheets that he had. That's it, just so crazy. He transported all that to Cartery County, dumped it out in a wooded area mm -hmm. where the animals consumed it. Well, yeah. And Shh. then um, he was arrested based on his confession. Mm -hmm. uh, he had used uh, lots of Clorox to clean the area. And of course, no, and nobody went in there. Right. Police weren't called to begin with. They were called after a month or two oh. when the woman had not contacted her family and they couldn't reach her. Okay. I was the only one that I ever, I ever went to. But that was eerie. That was eerie, you know. Had a whole team up there and um, and people were looking and finding pieces here and there and everywhere because I was photographing everything that was found. That was what I was there for. It's like watching Criminal Minds. Here, watch that show. They had, if, they had if a lot he had of kept that. his mouth shut, it was, it was very likely he never would have been indicted because there was not enough evidence to prove he did anything. Right. He, she was missing. That was it. He covered his tracks very well, even his car. But he never reported her missing initially? That's, that's, that's not a law. No, I agree with that, but I mean, to it me, it makes you suspicious. Makes you, I would suspect why did you why do you don't why do you not report they were also, your spouse missing in Oslo County? They were very loners; they kept to themselves. They were mm -hmm. Buddhist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that, but if someone's spouse goes missing, you would think they would report that. You would, which is why you know I would say I'd be like, but wait I, a minute, why? Unless you're the one that caused. Well, the no, I agree with that, but I, I don't. I would, missing. Yeah. I would be okay. willing to bet that over the years, decades, there have been probably a lot of spouses who have just gone home and the husband didn't report them missing. They just left. He knew they were going to leave. He, they knew they were going to leave, and then they just left. They never reported the missing. Some of these young girls marry. Young guy, Marine, they're mm. not they're not ready for that kind of life. No. He's gone for mm -hmm. 12 months out of the, you know, 12 months or so, and they're on their own. It's hard on It is hard. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. you, know, you probably have some cases like that. Yep, I do. Clients. Mm -hmm. I've had in the past, too, yeah. Mm. Um, it, it's tough. And, and again, for you, you folks, it, if you're suffering from any situations like this um kelly's company is now advertising with us community prevention services so you know give them a call uh, they keep everything quiet mm -hmm. they do not reveal names 
They will not reveal any specifics of your cases or your situation. They don't do that. Mm -mm. They can't even be compelled to under most cases. That's true. So that's uh, that's Had a good thing. Try that. So nine one zero three five three zero nine seven two. If you need that number, give mm -hmm. us a call or or whatever. We'll get it for you. Get it for you. Uh, what else we got going on this week? Coming up tomorrow, we got an interesting day. Yeah, we have Marissa Reader from mm -hmm. the Marissa Reader. Marissa Reader is so coming she, in. She was at the Ham Club meeting on Saturday. Yeah, talking was about she? the New River Splash and uh, the Ham Club is going to be uh, providing some. Uh, communications for along the route right and this is a grueling thing right i ain't gonna do it I, you know i'll get tired of looking at this one they we also they're gonna be jumping in the river and all sorts of good stuff i'm not jumping in the river yeah jacksonville no. public safety's uh fire marshal will be calling Yay. in tomorrow talk a little bit about the training that they've been undergoing for putting out fires due to lithium batteries and electric vehicles They've been doing training on that. That's, uh, that's right up your issues. alley. They're having issues nationwide with batteries and, and uh, right. electric cars because they're lithium batteries. Lithium batteries, uh, even the airlines don't like you flying with lithium batteries installed in your devices. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, it, let me ask you this. How many tools do you have that use a lithium battery? Too many. All right. Do you keep them plugged in all the time? Nope. I don't either. I've gotten to where I keep them unplugged. I'm going to use one, then I'll plug it for you that morning. You bring a good point up here. Uh, those they will stop charging, but they're still getting juice. If you leave them plugged in. Right. Yeah, it's, still, it's still there. There are some sophisticated chargers out there that will shut down when they see, seek a full, you know, find a full battery charge. Right. They shut off. Right, Yes. I don't trust them. Well, ever since we've been discussing that, and you know, and I have a lot of things mm -hmm. that I use those batteries for, and they're all plugged in all the time. And I, I we got talking about how the chance of it starting a fire in your garage. Yeah. Plus, you have anything stored in your garage that's like flammable. a can of gasoline. Yeah, like a can of gasoline. Uh, that's going to take down your whole house. You know, if you if you got a a, a bunch of batteries like that, and you want to charge them all up. Um, you can get one of those power strips, yes. a heavy duty one, not one of the little cheap That's ones. That's what I have. Plug your chargers into that. And then in front of your charger, buy yourself a little timer, a two or four, six hour timer where you can set it to turn the power off right. at a prescribed period of time. Do they make the, 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 the strips like that now? Yeah, they can make a strip, but then you have to buy the charger, oh, the, the, yeah, the, okay. buy the timer separately, which is easy yes. to do, not a big deal. And you can you can plug those in. Oh, that's good to know. Yep. I, I've never thought about the timer thing. Yeah. Oh. No, I have been trying to be more cautious with the lithium batteries. Yeah, all of us need to be that way. Good morning. Who's this? This is Phil. Hey, Phil. Hey, what's Phil. up? Hey, I'm just calling to give you guys an update about that um, assisted living place there on the Daniel Drive. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, What I saw, I hadn't drove by there, but... Looks like it's been closed down. Oh, no. Um, it's like a 120 big facility. That's what I was talking about, having like mental health there. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's under an attorney, something in Florida and everything. Oh, right. I'm on, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the person that owned it looks like all the other. Um, assistant livings that that person owned was all shut down throughout North Carolina. Mm. What I've seen on the internet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to get some more information and everything. Then once I do that, I'm going to contact the, the uh, Senator Rosara and the other North Carolina House of Representatives. Okay. So that would be a good little health facility. It could for be. This area. It could yeah. be perfect. Just yeah. what we need. Everything. It would, yeah. And I know it's been renovated because they worked on that after um, Florence. Florence. I, I know that for a fact. Yeah. That'd be a perfect yeah. place for a mental health facility. Because it's there by hotels. Mm -hmm. 
120 uh, beds will be good. Be perfect. Be absolutely. County needs to look into that. Yep. And I will get with um, Commissioner Knapp also once I find more information. Okay. Yeah. Give him a call. Right. Will do. Phil, awesome. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thanks Phil. for the update. Uh -huh. And Love thanks. It. Thanks for caring. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WDSME. Our number, 910-333-0139. 910-333-0139. We'll be right back. WSME. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? El Chino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostess, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Chino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Chino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. The best deal for the grill is at Jones LP Gas and Oil Company each Friday. Every Friday from 8 a.m. till closing at 5, Jones LP Gas and Oil Company will fill your 20-pound LP gas grill cylinder for only $11. You heard that right. Each Friday till closing, you can have your 20-pound LP gas cylinder filled for only $11 at Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881 Wilmington Highway in the heart of Verona. In addition to saving money on your LP gas for the grill, Jones Gas and Oil is your full-service gas and oil company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural gas and oil needs as well as gas appliances, LP replacement parts, fill cylinders and tankless water heaters, and they offer a 10% military discount on installation. Remember to get that cylinder filled every Friday until closing for only $11. Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881 the Old Wilmington Highway, Verona, phone 910-346-6384. If your plans include hitting the road this year to do some traveling, make sure a visit to Silent Service Center is on your to-do list. Travel safety starts with the tires on your vehicle, and a visit to Silent Service Center will give you peace of mind with the best value in all name brand tires and the largest selection of used tires in this area. In addition to quality tires, Silent Service Center is a North Carolina inspection station and does complete brake service, oil changes, and alignment service. Silent Service Center, 1707 Lejeune Boulevard, Jacksonville, and 108 West Main Street, Havelock. Phone 910-353-4760. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store down home, down the street. Where good things cost less. Main Street, Maysville. Fresh ground chuck, 10 pounds or more, $2.99 a pound. Certified Angus beef family pack, T-bone steaks, just $11.99 a pound. Boneless chuck roast, $5.79 a pound. St. Louis style pork ribs, just $2.49 a pound. Prairie Fresh Whole Boston Butt, $1.49 a pound. Spring Mountain Farms Whole Chicken, $1.59 a pound. Prairie Fresh Prime Pork Tenderloin, $5.99 each. Butterball Ground Turkey, $3.99. Red Seagulls Grapes, only $99 a pound. North Carolina Grown Fresh Strawberries, one pound package, $2.99. Russet Potatoes, great for baking, only $2.99 a bag. Select varieties, Western apples, $2.99. One pound bag, crisp snap beans, $1.99 a pound. Delicious tropical mangoes, two for $5. And two, two liter Coke products, just $4. Make sure you ask about pig perks. Join the pig rewards program today to save money. That's your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly store, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Main Street, downtown Maysville. Remember, say big with the pig. This is live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. All right, we're back and uh, on the line. First of all, we got Theo. Good morning, Theo. What's up? Good morning, DePauro. Hey, Kelly, thank welcome back. Thank you. Listen, what's wrong with the knee? Those indoor games will get you every time. I'm telling you, I. Uh, Two minutes into it, it was sad. That's just how out of shape I am. <laughs> yeah. So, look, uh, only seven months before uh, November 5th. All right, Bert? No, close to that, yes. Seven yeah, months? Yeah, don't forget 8191, okay, buddy? I heard what you said. 81. All right. Oh. So, listen, uh, you. I heard you guys say that uh, you went to listen to Mark Robinson. I did. What did you get out of it? Wait. Hey, he's a very passionate speaker. Did you go, Rayford? Yes, I did. 
What did you get out of it? Well, he, you know, he was, he, he was the normal political uh, guy, mm-hmm. which which is good. Uh, he, you know, did his handshake. He was very personable, I will tell you that. He's a lot friendlier in person than I have seen him before. I've seen him several times in person, but he seemed to be a little more communicative, communicative with the individuals within uh, throughout the whole group, the whole room there, including me, who was probably the only non-Republican there. That's what I would guess. But I, I don't know. He, he's, you know, his message was fairly clean, fairly clear. There are some things left unsaid, and uh, he said he will talk to us on the show. That's where we asked the right questions. We can't, I, you know, he was there in a public situation, and it was all about him. Uh, when he comes on the air, it will be all about us and him. He's coming in personally? I don't know if he's in town, he will, but I doubt it. Okay, now, th- this guy, right, uh, about 10 years ago, when we had the uh, Sandy Cook uh, massacre there where 20 kids died and six teachers, and they were talking about uh, the media and everybody talking, doing something about guns. He came with, a, with, with you know, not going to take my guns away and this and that. I mean, his mind went to guns. We had a massacre, but his mind went to guns. Before I knew it, the guy was lieutenant governor. What was his qualifications that you guys chose him for lieutenant governor? Oh, you know, I'm not sure what what you would classify as qualifications. I'd be, I don't know what the what, well, lieutenant governor. What, and let's, what was he qualified let, to be a lieutenant governor? Let, let's go. Let's, let's go. Hold on, just a minute. Let's go back to Sandy Hook. What year was that? That was like 10 years ago. I can't give you the exact year, but he was the one who came out and said about it. Nobody's going to take my gun. Lee, no, you know what his speech was. Right, That's uh, how you met the guy. That's how you fell in love with him. 2012. talking about guns. Okay. No, it was not then. Because Sandy Hook, I don't know that he had anything to say during when Sandy Hook happened because he was not in the limelight. He didn't come into the limelight until sometime in what, late 19, uh, late 20s, 2019 mm-hmm. or something like 20, that? Lee, which when was, was Lawrence? That he came out 2018. And he said, Nobody's going to touch my gun. Which one? Excuse me. No, I in think 2018 it was, is when he made his. Uh, the gun thing. Is and, he, that's and, where he spoke in front of the Greensboro okay, City now, Council. Now, let me straighten this out for you just a little bit. Talk to him about that. Did you own a gun when you went before the Green, Greensboro City Council? He said, no, never had a gun. Did not own a gun then. Mm-hmm. I was opposed to the City Council banning a business from operating in the city. That's what I went up there and spoke about. It was not pro gun, it was pro business. He just said, I, you know, I support the Constitution, uh, but I don't own a gun. Now, that was then. So Sandy Hook, he wasn't even does he own in the now? picture. It, yes, he does. He okay. wasn't even in the picture when Sandy Hook happened. Okay, I got my, I got the wrong uh, 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 date on there. Okay. But I remember he became famous because he made a big speech about guns. You guys fell in love with it. All of a sudden, I, like I turned around and he's lieutenant governor. Well. Now... I don't know what his qualifications are, but he wants to be governor. What? what? And, and, and you see the rhetoric that he, he, he spills all the time, right? And now you guys go and listen to him, and now because he sings a nice song, all of a sudden he's your man. What, what, what qualifications do you have to have, Theo, to be a, a, a politician? I don't know what qualifications, but you're picking him as a governor, right? Okay. He's running for governor. He's running for governor, yes. Okay. All right. So, who's Michelle Moore? Michelle Morrow? Morrow, yeah. She's running for the superintendent of public instruction. What do you think about her? I think she's a far right winger. I don't like her, Theo, and I'll go on record as saying I don't like her. And yes, I I would say, you know, she's been she's had a lot of rhetoric that she's put out there on social media Where in the past. Where do her kids go to school? And they're homeschooled. No home. I mean, she's called for Obama's execution on social media. I she's too far right for me. Saying Yeah. So when, she's when wacky. you say we gotta get together and get, can we live together and be and this and that, both Mark Robinson and her are talking, they're not talking nice. You put those people in, in office, what are you going to get out of them? Remains anyway, to be, I don't have to, go running, they get voted in. You guys like and you're going to pick, uh, you know, uh, where are you coming from for these people? Why, what's so much love about them? 
Anyway, I, ha I have a suggestion for the show. Okay. We need a notebook to write down some of these uh, people that come on there, some of the guests. Uh, when we had the transportation guy, Anthony, whatever, he said he was going to look to putting lines on the expressway. You should mark the day he came down and his name, that he was going to do something about that. Then we had uh, Lazarus in there, mm -hmm. Senator Lazarus. He, he, on his way out, he said he would do something about reefs across America. That was right? just he has done yes. That. yes, yes, he, he has. has been working on that. So let's write, because he told me that he was going to look into it two, three years ago when he came on the show, and we were having trouble with the reefs across America. But he Remember? did. He, he, I will tell you, Theo. Even the commissioners, when they promise something, let, you write it down so we have something to remember them by, okay? I will tell you this. Mike Lazar, as a personal citizen, has written a hefty check every year in support of reefs across America. Yeah. And Friday, when he was going out the door after, the sh after we were, he was done here, he turned around he said, I'm going to check on getting y'all some money for research. He wanted America. to know how much it would cost. He and wanted which to check. That's right. Yeah. 90,000. So he's Maybe on it. All the businesses he's got, he can come up with 90,000. I, I, that's why, why should he be the sole provider? We well, need everybody to jump in. Man, you know, all these businessmen have money, right? Yeah. They also have to okay. work for it. They, uh... All right. No problem. So one last thing, uh, Lee, Yes. When we talk about uh, government jobs, you sound like you, you don't want to promote government jobs. Why do you Even say that? They want, they want to privatize, social, uh, they want to privatize uh, schools, right? Give those jobs out, the teachers' jobs, give them privatized. I don't know privatize about that. The, the postal service, privatize now the DMV. All these are government jobs that people are making some decent money and they get respect. All right, now. Some of these private owners do not respect people. I'm not saying all, because I know I had the lady call up the other day saying right. about uh, she takes care of her people. Okay, there's people that take care of the people, but most of the time, uh, they don't take care of the people. And when this DMV closed after 30 years, now I know this guy is one of the board members for uh, Onslow's, Jones Onslow, right? Uh, he was in there for 30 years. He made money off this business for 30 years. Yet if somebody worked for him for 30 years, they got a salary that we don't really know. You know, Lazarus said that the, the salary is pretty decent because you have to have some qualifications, so it's not minimum wage. But why aren't you supporting these government jobs? Well, first of all, the... The Postal Service will probably never, ever be privatized. They've talked about that for years, and it's never gone through. It is never part of the government. Ever, right? Because you know how the Republicans But I will are. tell you, though, that okay. where you could once get a job at the Postal Service and within a year or two become full-time, be eligible for retirement, health care, and everything, it's not like that anymore. It's now all part-time work, and you have to put in many, many years and hope you get a full-time position. And all the years that you've worked thus until you've become a full-time employee do not count. count. So it's like if you get hired full-time after you've been there 10 years, that's like your first day on the job. See, so that's government changes. As far as the DMV, I don't really, I, I can see a lot of we would get from that, from it going private, and that would be up to the owners of that business to be able to provide their full-time employees with a pension, just like where you work. That company provides full-time employees with their pension, with health care, and that's what privatizing the DMV would be responsible for that, too. you talk about where I work? Yes. There's no pension. So, so you don't you get full-time hours there? Yeah, you get full-time hours if you want them, but there's nothing after 30 years or 50 years or 100 years, you get nothing. You just say, they just say goodbye to you. Well, you need to quit and get a government job then. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. You keep uh, All right. taking Theo, them away Theo, and Theo, see what happens. We're overloaded here. We're, we're way right. beyond, okay? Thanks, yeah, okay. Theo. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. Joy, hang in there. we got to take a quick break. We'll, we will be right back here live in Local Real Talk. WSME. 
Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro reminds you to check your mailbox and find your quote on homeowner's insurance. Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro goes the extra mile to make sure you're in good hands, like helping you customize your home and windstorm coverage with their write your own home policy. Yes, save even more when you bundle your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, and even your golf cart. Remember, if it rolls or floats, call Tammy for a quote. You and everything you own are in good hands with Tammy Fry Allstate Swansboro. Call today, 910-326-5383. Tammy Fry Allstate, 638 West Corbett Avenue in the friendly city by the sea, Swansboro. Check your mailbox today for savings on your homeowner's insurance. If you plan to... Build, remodel, repair, or do cottage or home improvements. Williams Hardware, 311B Bridges Street, Morris City, should be your first stop. Williams Hardware carries power tools and equipment, chains and fasteners, plumbing and electrical supplies, along with Gerber, Buck, and Case Knives. Williams Hardware is your helpful handy hardware store. Williams Hardware cuts glass to size and cuts and threads pipe. When the chores are done and the cleanup is finished, light up that Wilmington grill from Williams Hardware. Williams Hardware, 3011B Bridge Street, Morris City. Open Monday through Saturday from 7.30 to 6 p.m. And Sundays for your convenience, noon till 5. Phone Williams Hardware, 252-726-7158. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan offices of Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane & Associates welcome all ages, all major insurances, including military. Lane & Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. Hey, race fans, New River All-America Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville's action attraction presents the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250, featuring the Z-Max Cars Tour this Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. with the biggest names in short track racing. Get ready for some fun and excitement as the racing season gets underway. Reserve your spot now. General admission tickets, $25. Seniors, military, kids 6 to 12, $12 Cash at the gate. Kids five and under free. Advanced tickets available online. At it's the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 this Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. And the only place you're going to see it is at New River All America Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, okay, we're back here for the little uh, closing minute or two. Joy, what's up? Morning. Welcome back, Kelly. She just left. <laughs> oh, I, I flipped down with things so I you couldn't hear me one ring or reverb, or whatever that thing's called. Um, I was going to real quick talk about Phil. I went to that Angela house um, over a year ago and went on a tour uh, about putting my aunt there with mm -hmm. her. And it's really, they've renovated it really nice, but I, I waited and I would call about every month and they kept saying that they were waiting on furniture. And even mm. now, when you call the number, you, you, you get a recording of someone. Um, but apparently, is that, is that the one beside close to like Walmart, that little street there, but where McDaniel used to be on McDaniel Drive? Yeah, I think so. You're talking about something different. I think that's the place. Uh, okay, because um, I, I don't, they said every time I would call, they said they're waiting on more furniture, but they had a, quite, a, quite a few rooms that were did have furniture in them and um it's really super nice inside yeah um the renovation part I, but i don't know what happened maybe he knows more um i know that they did have a doctor also already assigned a geriatric mm -hmm. uh position um so i don't know what's going on with that place i don't know either. I, I, did I, hear I, I think it's there's gonna, there gonna be some changes made uh, for sure no doubt about it some changes are yeah, forthcoming. It's, it's really a nice place. So, I mean, it, it would be something possible for um, county maybe to look into or yep. someone. County in the state would be great. Yeah. And it, it is extremely nice. Okay. 
good. Okay. Thank you, Joy. Uh, y'all have a good yep, one. You too. Have a great week. Real quick, like on our way out, a San Francisco lawmaker has introduced a proposal that would require grocery stores in the city to provide six months of notice before closing a store and to explore a replacement supermarket at the vacated location. In other words, the supermarkets over there who are closing their doors because of all the crap that's going on and the lawlessness that's going on and the uh, cops not being able to enforce the laws. And even if they do make an arrest, they're not getting convictions. The judges are turning them loose. So there's no reason to make arrests, just ties up people. And the stores are closing up left and right. And the city That's wants crazy. them to give them at least, what was it, six months notice or 11 months notice or something, some kind of ridiculous time that they're going to close their doors. No, you don't have to do that. Why, why should I? You can't even protect me. Yeah, you don't. You no. refuse to protect my, mm-hmm. my investment, so I'm going to let you protect yours. Exactly. Up yours. See ya. What yeah. want to be you? <laughs> okay. So that's yeah. uh, <laughs> that ought to be good. Six months written notice to the board of supervisors. Baloney. And what are you going to do if I don't? Yeah, or nothing, honey. You You're going to come visit my business and find it locked up. Yeah, mm. there you go. Okay. We'll be back tomorrow. And uh, we've got Brian Kelly uh, on here from the Jacksonville Fire Department. Uh, and we've also got Marisa Reeder What's from Jones Onslow Sports Commission. Yeah, Jackson. Jacksonville Onslow Sports Commission is what I said. We do that every time, don't we? I do. I we don't do. mean to. I, I'm not there with you, though. Way. I want to just give her tourism books. And <laughs> anyway, Marisa yeah. will be here tomorrow, Marisa. and yes. we'll find out what uh, what's going on. I know about the New River Splash a little bit because she was at a meeting that I was at on Saturday. And uh, so the hand We club have a lot coming so up. Actually, lots coming up. Yes, we do. Have a good rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. And don't right? look at the sun. And do not look at the sun today. Do not look at where the sun isn't today either. Just look at it on TV later on. That's today. right. Watch it on TV. That's the best thing to do. They're protected. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. And tomorrow when you call in, tell us if you went wacky or your dogs went wacky, some things to listen out for. Listen 